All right, how about this problem? Uh, determine the stretch in each of the two springs required to hold the 20 kilogram crate in the equilibrium position shown. Each spring is an unstretched length of two meters of stiffness of 300 newtons per meter. All right, so uh, I'm not sure if it shows up in yours, but there, there's a, a rope, just a, a cable straight down from O uh, that may not show up. Uh, so this is in equilibrium. This is a 3D in equilibrium, and it's a particle equilibrium, right? Point O is kind of the my main point. Um, I, I don't ask you, and I don't really require free body diagrams for 3D uh, problems. It's too hard to draw, but you could try to draw a free body diagram, and if I was to draw something, I would draw a free body diagram for point O. Do you see that point O is kind of our main point in equilibrium? So look at all the forces acting at O, and all the forces have to sum up to zero. Uh, so remember, for 3D, I like to break forces into their components, right? Break forces into their components. Um, and uh, let's see, let, let me, so, I, you know, I don't require a free body diagram, but, but maybe we could try to draw and kind of just show what's, what's happening, right? All of these are pulling, right? All of these are pulling right here. Um, th there's a possibility that a spring could actually push um, and if, if it does, our answer would just come out negative. And I think eventually we would, we would have figured out, oh, oh, right there, it was actually pushing. That's why my force came out to be a negative force in the spring. Uh, a negative just means you chose the wrong direction, right? A negative a lot of times means you chose the wrong direction. So if I drew it out here and my final answer came out negative for this force, it means, oh, it was actually pushing. But, but most of these cases, you'll, you, you know the direction of the forces. Uh, all right, so I've got four forces. Let me break them up into their components. Let me go ahead and how about this one right here, the weight, right? The weight is, uh, what was it, 20 times 9.81. Uh, it was 196.2, and it's in the negative, oops, negative K, right? 196.2 in the negative K. All right. Put a star by that. How about the force in spring A? Uh, let me just let me just call it force in A. Uh, and I'm going to solve for it, and it's in the negative J, right? The way that they label the axes are the positive axes. Uh, so so I don't know it. I think I'm probably solving for it, basically. Uh, and then the force in spring B. It would be whatever its magnitude is in the negative i direction. And this tension in the cable. T, I'll call it TC. Tension in the cable. And you see that you are given not chord direction angles, not spherical angles. You're given dimensions. And that's fine. We can handle dimensions, right? We can handle dimensions. What, what do we think about when we think about dimensions, uh, F equals F U, or in this case, T equals T U, where U is R over magnitude of R, and R is how far does this go? You know, how far does this force go in the X? How far does it go in the Y? How far does it go in the Z? Okay, so let's look at that tension in the cable, T C. Let's try to write it in component form. F equals F U. Uh, so I don't know the magnitude, but I'm going to do as much as I can, right? I don't know the magnitude, but I'm going to multiply it through as much as I can, and maybe I'll just have that T, you know, throughout my problem. So T C times R over R. R is how far does it go? Look at this. It is pulling at point O. How far does it go in the X? Now be careful and don't mix up these. How far does it go in the X? It goes 6, right? 6 in the X. How far does it go in the Y? Positive 4 in the J. How far does it go in the Z? It goes up 12 in the K divided by 6 squared, 4 squared, 12 squared. Take the square root. All right. Uh, this denominator is 14. Um... But go ahead and multiply this through as much as you can. Go ahead and do 6 divided by 14. I think, is that 14? 
Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess six divided by fourteen will be point four two eight six TC. Multiply that through. Uh, so that is in the I direction. In the J direction, point two eight five seven TC. In the J, point eight five seven one TC. In the K. So do you see how I, I did that there? I don't know the magnitude. But I know the direction, if you know the dimensions, if you know the spherical angles or corner direction angles, go ahead and do that as much as you can. That's how I like to do it. And then go ahead and break it into components as much as you can and write, you know, something, 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 T in the I, something, 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 T in the J, something, 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 T in the K. Um, and I like to keep, you know, four or five significant digits throughout the problem, or at least three um, on my answer. So I, I think that's it, the four, breaking the vectors into their components. I've got this one right here. I've got this one, this one, this one. And then look at these, and we're going to have three equations, and we have three unknowns, right? What are our three unknowns? Force in spring A, force in spring B, and the magnitude of TC. Those three unknowns, I can probably solve for those three equations. In general, uh, for these 3D problems, you, you know, we're probably going to have three unknowns, but we have three equations to solve for them. Some of the forces in X, some of the forces in Y, some of the forces in Z. All right, so let's sum the forces in X, some of the forces in Y, some of the forces in Z <coughs> equal to zero. All right, so what's in the X? That one is in the X. That one, um, whoops, yeah. And I think it's at point four two eight six TC minus force in spring B equals zero. That one equation has two unknowns, so don't let's jump to my next one. Uh, the y e direction, point two eight five seven minus force in spring A. That one has two unknowns. Let me go to the z equation, point eight five seven one TC minus one ninety six point two. There we go. That one only has one unknown. So let's go ahead and solve TC 228.9. Plug that back up there. Plug that back up there. Force in spring B, 98.1. Force in spring A, 65.4. And so those are the those are the forces. All right. They came out positive means I drew them the right direction. So yes, those springs were being pulled. Right. Okay, but what well, I didn't do very well with the last problem was answering the question that it asked. Determine, so it didn't ask for the stretch, uh, sorry, it didn't ask for the force in the springs. That's what I just found. I found the force in the springs. It asks for the stretch in the springs. It asks for the stretch in the springs. Well, what I've got the force in the springs. Force is K times the stretch. Force is K times the stretch. I have the force, I have the K, I can find the stretch. So let's look at B. 98.1 newtons equals 300 newtons per meter times delta X. So the delta X for spring B, 0.327 meters. And then for spring A, the force was 65.4 equals 300 times that it's delta x, the delta x for spring A, 0.218 meters. And, and so that is the answer. Now, I didn't even I didn't even use the unstretched length of two. Why, why might I use the unstretched length of two? Um, it just asked me for the stretch. So I, I, I leave it as that, that is the stretch. Sometimes it might ask you, hey, what is the length of the spring? So the length of the spring would be the unstretched length plus the stretch. So the length now is 2.327 or 2.218 uh, now. But anyway, yeah, be careful. I'm terrible about it. Be careful about paying careful attention to what it's actually actually asking for and answering what it's asking for. So that's what it asked for. It asked for the stretch. But, you know, this is a weird problem. It had some springs and it, it asked for the stretch. But here's my process. Break them into components. Sum the forces equals to zero. All right? Break them into components. And sum of the forces in x equals zero. Sum of the forces in y equals zero. Sum of the forces in z equals zero. Those are our equilibrium equations because this is in static equilibrium. Newton's first law. If it's not, you know, accelerating left, right, 
sum of the forces in left right has to be equal to zero. If it's not accelerating up and down, sum of the forces up down has to be zero. You know, front and back, some of the forces have to equal zero.